These are the open position major seven chords. Here's A major seven. So instead of two, two, two for an A, it's gonna be two, one, and two. So the one is on the G string, the third string. That's A major seven. Now if we look at a D chord here, if we make this all twos down in the bottom, that's a D major seven. If we look at a C chord, we take this one out and make it an open. That's a C major seven. A G major seven could be played a few different ways. You could also take that three out, just like you can when you play a G chord. You can have it just be one three down there. So you could also do it like that, but with just one two. And we kind of mute the A string on that. So that's a G major seven. Here's an F major seven. Instead of barring the first fret on these bottom two strings, you can have that bottom string open. So it's three, two, one, and open. F major seven. A major seven. D major seven. C major seven. G major seven. Or with that three on the second string. F major seven. Another shape would be to take this A major seven and make that a movable shape. So B major seven would be two, four, three, four, two. C major seven, etc. Moving on up. Now if we look at this little D major seven shape, that becomes movable too. So O two 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 becomes one three three three. Now we can take this one, we can make a big open E major seven here. By going open, two, two, four, four, four. Now there's some other shapes for major seven, like this one. Five, four, two, two, two would be a D major seven. And see, that's based off that C major seven shape. You just make all these movable things. So if you look at the F major seven, that one becomes this thing. It's like a staircase. And whatever the bass note is, that's what the name of the major seven chord is. So that's an A note, so this is an A major seven chord. And look how it's very close to an A major chord. This happens to be the root note. You take that back one, it's also the eight note as well as the one note, right? So you take that back and that's the major seven right there. So you've added a major seven into the major chord. So let's look at a couple of examples of famous tunes that use the major seven chord. Uh, Rain Song by Led Zeppelin comes to mind. This is a regular major chord, G. Then you hear this different sound of that major seven chord. So he went from major to major seven, and then when he took that major seven down, that's a flat seven, so that's like a dominant seven. So that's a G dominant seven right there, so major. Major seven, seven. Now chords like this are interesting because this chord right here by itself is like an E flat, but it has a G bass. So that's where you would see E flat slash G, because the slash means you have a different bass note than normal, and that's the G bass note in this case. Then. They get into that one now. This is like a D chord down here, but it has a G bass. So it went from like an E flat slash G to a D slash G. Okay, so next example is gonna be uh, Pink Floyd from Time. Here we go, major seven. D major seven, A major seven. C minor seven, C sharp minor seven, B minor seven. Okay, so that was the D major seven used in that song to the A major seven. Went back and forth a few times. And then we brought in a minor seven for C sharp, C sharp minor seven. We're gonna get into the minor sevens here in a second. We have one more example for uh, a major seven chord. Think of Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers. That 
seven there. That's another major seven chord. So in this case, it's the seven, nine, eight, nine, seven. Okay, so we'll move to these minor sevens. So like I said, that was a minor seven from that previous tune, the Pink Floyd one. So say if we take this up to the fifth fret here, I'm going to give you an example of a Doobie Brothers tune. Long train running. So what they're doing there is they're hammering on from like a C chord with a D bass kind of thing. They're just hammering real quick into this D minor seven, five, seven, five, six, five. Okay, here's another example, and I like to relate it to this chord to get, show you the difference between the two sounds. So this is that Long Train Run in Doobie Brothers. It has that power chord note in it, that fifth. Now look at, let's take this up to E, let's look at Josie by Steely Dan. This does not have kind of this grounding note, this power chord note. They take that out and they play it like this. It's much more spacious and kind of open as opposed to be really like heavies, you know, grounded, like I say. It has a lot of like, that's like jazz chords, they leave out that fifth a lot because they want it to be more spacious and kind of free sounding. So, so that'd be like the seventh fret on the A string, and then you have like a D shape on these bottom strings down here like this, but you have to play it with these other fingers. Versus. Now they call this one uh, minor seven, no five, if you wanted to be technical with that. Okay, so that's a couple examples there. Here's another example. So that's So What by Miles Davis. He's also kind of using that D minor seven chord there. Now the horns are hitting this. And I have a trivia question for you. What other song got their riff from this bit from So What? by Miles Davis. And so to play that, you know, I'm just sliding these this D chord up. So in that song, they just go up a half step a little bit and then they come back. All right, now we're gonna talk about the minor six chord. So the minor six chord could be like something used in conjunction with the minor, going up into the minor seven there. Here's an ex example of Soul Power by James Brown. So this little riff here has the top of a D minor chord, but when I come in here to the B note, that's the sixth note of the scale. And then this C note is the flat seventh note of the scale. So this could be a six chord right here. This is a cool chord, we're gonna get into this later. That's called a raised nine chord. Here's another example. Say you could have a progression like this. Here would be a minor six also. So this is like five, three, four, three. That's a, a C seven nine. Dig the sound of that minor six here. It's different than a minor seven. You hear that sixth note, that B note. So it has an interesting sound of its own. Here's an example from a Pink Floyd song. that striking that can be that so that'd be like an open two two one two so it's an a minor with a two on the bottom string that's 
it's called Your Possible Past. That's about 51 seconds into that song from Pink Floyd's The Final Cut. So that's a very strong usage of it there. A lot of times it'll be in a funk thing like... So in this case, I'm just kind of playing this minor 7, 10, 8, 11, down to 10, 8, 10. So if the bass line is still staying in C and not doing like a chord change here when you change those things, you can always add that to kind of go, or, you know, kind of comp around with that minor 7. But if the bass start, a lot of times the bass will change, and that can also become this dominant 7 chord underneath here, like a 4 chord. So that'd be the case of like, oye como va. So here's your A minor 7, and it could be like that as well. But when the bass note changes, then this is a dominant 7 chord, so it's a little different. But if you're just playing it on the bass, then it's in the context of a minor 6 right there. So it, you, know, you can kind of add that to riffs here and there and stuff. Dominant seven, okay, blues chords. Let's look at all of our dominant seven open chords. Let's say A7 instead of two, 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 it's two, O, oh, two. So A string and then two, O, oh, two, open. D7 is open on the D and then two, one, two. C7 is like a C, but you put the pinky in on the third fret of the third string. That's a C7. And that shape it gets used a lot when you can be, make it movable. You make sure the outside strings are muted. And you're playing those four strings in there. That gets used a whole lot. Just like this A7 one becomes a movable shape. D7 as well. Let's look at um, E7 would be like the E chord, but pull that middle two out and you got open two, open one, open, open. So E7 becomes this movable shape here. So every open chord becomes a movable chord up the neck, and that has, that's how you get all the sharps and flats and all the different weird ones and play in different positions and stuff. Also, there's B7. Two on the fifth string, the B note. Two, one, two, open, two. And that's the one that kind of turns into this next one too. So a lot of blues things be like... That's going from the one note of the scale to the four note. That's what, and then the fifth one eventually will hit. That's gonna be a one, four, five. That's what it means when they say that. That's the notes of the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of a major scale. So this is the one, two, three, four, and five. So when, you, so when your bass note is on those strings, here's the five, to the four, to the one. And you could do that with all the notes of the scale. Say so if this was the one, B minor would be the two, C sharp minor would be the three, and those are minor threes. D is the major four, E is the major five, stuff like that. F sharp would be the minor sixth, and G sharp minor seven flat five would be the seventh chord. Okay, so once again, we got. Now this is one way to do it where we have five on the A string, Five, seven, five, seven, five. But the other way that people do a lot that's kind of comfortable and easy to do, has a nice ring to it, is would be this five, four, five, three on the other side of that fifth fret. Now I'll go up to the five, which is E. Here's the D. A lot of times you'll have a turnaround at the end. Now say, what if your chord started over here? Say if G was the scale you're in. You can flip it around like that. You have the lower chord here, but G, the fourth of G is C, so that would be that one. So G, G7 to C7. Go up to the five chord. Take a look at this G7 down here. Now, there's another version here. Three, two, three, four. It's another cool one too. So there's 
lots of cool ways to play these seven chords. And they have that twang of a major note mixing with a, it's like a major scale mixing with a minor note inside of it. So that minor note and major note, that's that twang. So you got a major, but then you put the, the flat seven in it. So you'll have that major note, but you got that minor note right next to it. There's another way to play it. Put your pinky on the, like the eighth fret in this case, the second string. And here's some other ones down here. We got like, um, this E7 can also be like a two, one, three, starting on the D string. You kind of mute the A and, or you can even have, have a whole E major. And just add that three to it on the second string. That's dominant seven, two. You could have open two, open one, three, open. And A7, you can have this O2, O2, O, but you can also put a three down there at the bottom. Or you can make all the twos from an A and add that three to the bottom. Let's look at one more example here from uh, Joe Walsh from James Gang. So he's not doing this full chord, but he has his A in the bass. And he's hammering. This is a big dominant seven effect when you hammer from the minor third into the major third. Because it's like you're starting as this minor sounding chord and you're making it happy real quick. So he is creating the effect, juicing the sound, if it were, of that A7 chord by doing that riff right there. And that shows you how you can get a twang into a rock song and it still sounds real cool, but it is bluesy. It's got, got that kind of bluesy twang to it. But obviously there's a lot of blues in rock and roll. Let's move it on and give you another example. Here's Mary Had a Little Lamb by Stevie Ray Vaughan. We're gonna use some more seven chords here. example of the two, one, and three starting on the D string there. And you want to mute the other strings over that bass note. See so yeah, how you go back and forth using the bass there. And then the A7 was that one with the twos and the three. You got that B7, two, one, two, oh, two. There's a power chord A. Sometimes you don't even hit the whole A7. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So don't forget your power chords. But those are kind of, you know, with major and minor and the power chord, you kind of see those all the time. So this is kind of about those extra ones. How about a six chord? Now, if we think about like a Johnny B. Good. that kind of a chugging kind of a honky tonk riff so that's called a six chord so you have a power chord here this is in b flat so it's on the sixth fret and the big strings you're going to go to this tenth fret with your pinky that becomes a six chord it's only the one and the six so you're going from a five chord to a six chord this is the four chord right underneath the one chord five chord So that's your sixth chord. That's kind of a honky tonk, boogie woogie kind of sixth chord. So. so it's a stretch, and you want to get that right in the sweet spot, that pinky. And a lot of things they'll go down to the four chord there, but this one doesn't. One more riff from that song.
Walk This Way by Aerosmith. It also has a... It even has some extra stuff to it. So we got the... So this goes from the to the 6 to the flat 7 up here too. And then it kind of goes to the 1 down here with the power chord there. And comes back on the way back. And also got the little chorus thing. like a C7 and that you know how I said the C7 can have that pinky in there that's what they use here so this is like the ninth fret and the third string and the 11th fret and the second string and that becomes the 8 and the 10 so it's like That's just a 1-4 right there. That's a C7 to an F7. A lot of times instead of a 7 chord, so you got this C here, C7, you come down to this 9 chord. That's a nice one. It takes some getting used to with the ring finger having to bar down on those three strings on the bottom. But this is the James Brown kind of funk chord. Think about like, I feel good. Or a sex machine. And that's a 13 when you put that pinky down there. We'll get to that in a second. Let's say like James Brown's Make It Funky. So that is kind of the quintessential funk chord right there. That's a dominant seven, because you got your dominant seven. But the ninth note of the scale is added. That's the E note right there. That'd be the fifth fret of the second string. So if you want to know about some James Brown riffs and James Brown chords, I got a link here to take you over there some more lessons when you're done with this one. Okay, so let's look at the next step of that seven chord. So we have the raise nine. So we have the seven nine, but it's a sharp nine. So instead of this E note, it goes up to F. Okay, so that's the purple haze chord is what I call it. Dominant seven, raise nine. So this would be like, in this case of the seventh fret, you could use the E, big E with it as well. But if you were over here, say like in the fifth fret, it would start with this fifth fret, five, four, five, six. Don't Take Me Alive by Steely Dan, I just did a lesson on. I'll give you a link here. This one starts out with one of these chords too. Etc. So there's lots of different ways to do it. This is a common way, like taking your dominant seven chord. Remember how we talked about that pinky on the second string? Well, if you put it on the first string too, you can get one of those raised nine chords. Another thing with raised nine chords that happens a lot in like a jazz tune would be like you consider this like the, kind of the five chord. You could give it a raised nine down to a flat nine down to like your your one so say if the g is like one two three four five that's the five of c so on the five chord we can do a raise nine to a flat nine to like a major seven on the one and that was another way to do a major seven think about we had this shape down here where you can kind of tuck this in over here it looks like a minor shape on the bottom but if you have that c bass here that's another way to do a cool major seven Okay, one more example of a raise nine. Think about Taxman by the Beatles. All right, here's another example. I have a tune called Get Real With Me. It kind of finishes off. It's in G minor. And that's where I do the raise nine to the flat nine to like a C major seven.
And here's a C major seven with a G bass. Three, three, two, open, open, open. I go into a little, little arpeggio riff off the major seven for C. If you want to know more about arpeggios, I've got a lesson here. This is going to be a, a major six nine. This is what I also use to finish this song. G raise nine, G flat nine, C major seven, a little arpeggio. But then I do this C major six nine. This is going to go three, two, two, three, three. And if you were to bring it up into this seventh fret position, you could go seven, 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 eight, eight. And if you can get this eight on top, and then I come back here and I hit the octave of the lower one here. So this would be like 15, 14, 14, 15, 15. So that's a C six nine, C major six nine. Now a C minor six nine is also very cool to kind of end a song with striking kind of chord. So it's three, one, two, so the only thing that changed is we went from this major third of C, the E, to an E flat. So it's three, one, two, three, three. Got to get that pinky down there to get both of those. So that's a very interesting chord to kind of end a song with. So we're going to look at the major six chord now. This is going to be a little intro of a Stevie Ray Vaughan tune called Lenny. That's our sixth chord right there. If you notice, this note here is not normally in an A chord. It's the sixth note of the scale. It's been added to, if you notice, these two notes are in an A chord normally. So it's a sixth chord here. Back to the six, and then. like all six chords. Okay, so that's a six chord. You got the fifth fret on the big string, nothing on the A, and then you got fourth fret, and you got six and five, and you mute the little E. That way it becomes a movable chord wherever you want it. Okay, so check out Lenny by Steve Ray Vaughan. I've got a video on that one too. Now we're going to talk about the diminished chord. Let's say if you had like a 2 5 1, it'd be like a D minor 7 to G7, C. A lot of times right here, they'll put in a, a diminished chord that's like a half step up, moving up to that next chord. So it's like C, C sharp diminished, which would be like fourth fret and then five, three, five. The other one that's very commonly known is this one. As long as you have, like in this case, if I want a C sharp, as long as I have a C sharp, that's a C sharp there. And this little shape, that's a diminished shape. Interesting thing about diminished, couple different things. One is you can take that chord up three frets, keep going three frets. And it's always just a different inversion of the same chord. The other thing is all of the notes of that, like G, C sharp, E, B flat, or A sharp, all of those notes are all the name of that chord. Any one of those could be the name of that chord because all of those other notes have to be in that chord because they're all spaced three frets apart. They're spaced a step and a half away from each other. So if you wanted to do a, a scale for this thing, Those would be where you'd find all the notes. Say if you started on C, C, E flat, G flat, A, C. And all of those chords, as long as you had like a say a C in it, so here's a C, those would be the same chord each time. So let's do a couple examples of a diminished riff. So here's a song by the Grateful Dead called Deal. It gets into the chord progression. Just kind of like walking up to the next note, making that a diminished, gives it a cool moving around, kind of kind of out there kind of feel, right? See 
there, it's almost the same thing, that D7, but it doesn't have that weird note. So that's a common movement too, to go from a major chord to a dominant seven. But in this case, they didn't use that because it wasn't the, the kind of movement they wanted. So you don't use it there. But here it's gonna come in a second. It's got that wacky sound to it. So here's an example of using a diminished riff within a riff that has other things in it. So this is Slipknot by the Grateful Dead. Okay, so that shows you kind of started with a minor thing in A. Now once they get up here, that's that scale, that's that diminished arpeggio. If you want to know more about arpeggios, check out this link. But this is a diminished arpeggio. So all of those notes are three frets away from each other. It's all just those same notes. It's got D, it's got F. G sharp and B. And then they take it up a step, so they have E and G and B flat and D flat. Then you get into a minor one, major ones. And with all majors, but they started with minor, they went into diminished. To move around, they kind of had like a minor one here. They go into some major ones. So that's an example of using the diminished. Okay, then we have the augmented chord. This is like a seven chord. But, so what happens is, instead of a dominant seven note right here, we have a sharp five over here. So a five would be D, this is like putting the D sharp in there. Think of Ophelia by the band. Think of when they go to the chorus on that. Another example is Oh Darling by the Beatles. That'd be like seven on the A string, seven, six, five, five. Oh darling, please believe me. So you guys know the sound of that one. Okay, so that was an augmented chord. Let's look at this minor nine. So we had this minor six earlier where we had five, three, four, three. Now if we put the five down here on the second string, that becomes a minor nine. So instead of this sound, that's the minor six sound. Here's the minor nine sound. It's got a different ring to it, right? Here's another example. Here's a minor nine. Five, three, five, five, five. We got the minor note, we got the flat seven note, this is the nine note right here. So here's a G, we could do this a couple different ways. We're trying to get a G minor seven here with a nine down here. Now remember how we talked about that chord where we keep the five out of there? Here's the one for the bigger string, that minor seven. So it'd be like three, don't do anything on the A, and then three, three, three. If you wanted the nine, you put that fifth fret down there, because the A is the second note of the scale, which becomes the nine in the higher octave.
however you want to do it. Now if we put this pinky down here, we got a minor 9 13. Okay, now here's another minor nine. Think of like Breathe by Pink Floyd. So instead of an E minor there, we're gonna have this the F sharp again added to the E. So F sharp is the second note of the scale, so that becomes the nine in the higher register, right? So that's an E minor nine. O, oh, two, four, open, open, open. Nice ring to it. I think of another one, um, Al Di Miola Mediterranean Sundance with Paco De Lucia. That's an E minor 9 as well. All right, now let's talk about slash chords. The kings of slash chords is like Steely Dan. So a slash chord, one example, of any, anything is like, say, if you had an A chord, you had a different bass. Like, say, you got a B bass on that. So Michael Jackson had a lot of those where you'd have like a A major, but it'd have a B bass. So it'd have like a 2 in the bass. That kind of stuff. This would be another example. You got like a C chord on the bottom here, 5-5-3, five, five, but you got a D bass. That kind of sound. So even Bill Withers like used that one in um, Lovely Day. He has that kind of thing. So here's an example of Steely Dan. They're going to have um, Josie. Let's look at the chorus of Josie. And this uses a lot of the chords we've talked about. So this is a raise 9 off the F sharp. That'd be like 9, 8, 9, 10. And this is an augmented chord. This is a B, B7 augmented type thing. So you got 7, skip 1, 7, 8, 8. So you got that sharp 5 in there that makes it augmented. So we got a raise 9 on the F sharp, augmented on the B. We got an E minor 7. Now this is going to be one of these slash chords. So they have a 4 in the bass a lot of times in Steely Dan stuff. So this is a C chord. The fourth note of C is F, so we have an F in the bass. So we got same chords here, E minor 7 to A7 this time. Then they go A minor. Always interesting when you go from a major to a minor in the same chord. You know that's a modulation. To a D7-9, James Brown funk chord. Let's go over those again. G major 7, I got the 3 bass, and then I got 4, 4, 3, 2. C major 7 is a C, just with the 1 out, right? And we got this F sharp, raise 9. And we got a B7 sharp 9. So once again, we got F sharp, raise 9, B augmented, E minor 7 to C slash F. F sharp, raise 9 again. B augmented, E minor 7 to A7, and then A minor 7 to D9, or D7-9, G major 7, C major 7, we got an F sharp raise 9 to a B raise 9. Here's another Steely Dan example of a 6-9 chord, we got Kid Charlemagne, so we got an A minor top, we got a G6 top. Then we're going to have part of this F6-9. Remember how that went like 8, 7, 7, 8, 8, that kind of shape? 
they're not going to use the bass note, they're going to use the top of it. So it's going to be three, four, one. And here's another 13 I didn't talk about. So if you have a dominant 7 chord, if you were to come back here, oh, here's the other thing about a dominant 7. A lot of times if you don't want the 5 in there, you would make it like a D shape on these 4th, 3rd, and 2nd strings and use your bass note up here and not have that 5th in it. Just like a minor 7 would be like that. Now if we do this thing to it, we put this note up in here, so we're going to have like 6 in this case, this is B flat. 6, skip a string, 6, 7, 8. Now we got a 13 in there. Just like. If we had to do this near the open, it'd be one, open, one, 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 three. That'd be a B flat, seven, 13. And that's the same up here. So once again, the Steely Dan song. Three, four, one. F69. B flat. B flat 713 on that one. Thanks a lot. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.